In part one to this video review, we looked at the DM32UV's features in operation. In part two, we'll do a deeper dive into the CPS or customer programming software. While not a requirement, most folks find that using a CPS to program a DMR radio is a necessity. DMR radios have a bunch of variables that need to be entered into the radio's database in order to set up channels used to transmit to various repeaters, talk groups, and individuals using DMR. The CPS is the interface between the radio and all those external data inputs required for the radio to work in DMR mode. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you'd click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel if you haven't already. Those things really help the channel grow. The DM32 CPS is pretty typical of most DMR CPSs. Of the three primary ham digital modes, DMR is viewed it by many as the hardest to program. I'll leave a link to my video on DMR programming basics on the end card and in the description. When you understand the basics, programming isn't that hard. It just includes a fairly large number of variables that have to be entered and set correctly. Here's an overview of the CPS. Let's take an abbreviated look at the CPS for the DM32. It's a digital radio, so it's going to look similar to other DMR CPSs. If you're new to this, this isn't going to be enough to teach you how to do a cloak plug, but it will show you some of the things that you're going to need to, to keep in mind. So we're going to start, as we always do with a CPS, with going to the COM setting. We COM, mine is COM3 for the programming cable that I'm using. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to read from the radio. These icons duplicate some of the things here. So here it's, you know, file, open, save, model information, settings, where's where I got my COM port, read, write, uh, various tools that I can use here. And then I can go into what I'm going to display and then a help about. So let's start by reading from the radio. You can see I'm not going to download the digital contacts and we'll start reading from the radio. So I've got my read successful. That took about 45 seconds or so. I've edited out the, the wait time here. And here we've got the channels that I've already programmed. But before we get into that, there are a couple of things I want to point out to you uh, when you're using a DMR type radio. First, when, you, when we go into the digital area, this is where we're going to be programming information the radio needs for digital. And then down here, this is what some of the information it needs for doing the analog. Of course, it's an analog radio as well. Channels include information that has to be input before you can program the channel. And so you don't want to jump right into channels first. The first thing we want to do is we want to go down here. We want to set up our digital ID. This is my DMR number here. You need to get that from radioidnet.net. Uh, we want to put in our talk groups and we can import talk groups or we can just put them in. Now, I normally don't have that many talk groups, so I'm just going to type them in here. And so I can do that by using the add or I can import. Now, import from Brandmeister, for example, shows up in this file format right here. But the radio expects this file format right here. So you'll have to do some editing in Excel and then import it via a CSV or a comma a separated value type file. Next, we're going to go down to digital contacts. Uh, there's not much here I'm going to do with this radio. The problem is that if I download contacts, there are you know, like 150,000 of them right now, and this radio only holds 50,000. So unless you want to sort to find your 50,000 favorite people, uh, it's easier just to leave this blank and then add the user IDs for someone you know if you're going to be using DMR directly with them. The radio supports Talker alias, which will provide the basic information to the receiving caller when you're in the DMR system. So that's probably going to be what you want to do in this case, as opposed to sorting through and picking out your favorite 50,000 uh, digital contacts. Here we need to have some receive groups. Receive groups is what the 
channel will listen to. When you've got that channel selected here, you can see I've set up a couple of them. And to edit those, we can simply double click on the number. Here are the various contacts that I have available. And then I can add them into the receive group, the ones that I want or don't want. So I'm going to cancel that out. And so these need to be put in. So we're going to have to add talk groups. We're not going to worry about digital contacts. We need to add receive groups. I'm not going to worry about these digital encryptions or quick texts messages. So this information along with our DMR ID is going to have to be added. Then at that point, we can go up and start filling in channels. And so when we edit a channel, you can see these are blocked out. They're grayed out because this information is locked because they're digital channels. Here it flips. Uh, and so this information is blocked out because these are analog channels that I've added in. And so to uh, edit a channel, it's the same thing. Double click the number. You can give it a name, the frequency. This is the frequency of my hotspot. It's digital. Um, I don't want high power going to my hotspot, so I would set that as low. Scan lists uh, if I wanted to use them. And then over here, I would give it a name and the contact is disconnect. And I'm going to get that from my available contacts that I've listed here. And that's why I say we want to go into our contacts first. In this case, it's going to call them talk groups. They, they mix them up a little bit. So this is the talk group. This is the list that we just saw in that channel. So we go back here. We drop down. This is the list that we just looked at. And those have to be in before we can put them into the channel element here in this channel programming. And so I've gone through, I've done a number of things. OS represents my hotspot, my open spot. Uh, if you were using a Pi Star, you might want to use HS for hotspot or whatever hotspot you're using. And then of course you can continue to add digital channels if you're planning to use a DMR repeater. Down here we have the same kind of thing. In this case, I'm going to pick a channel. In this case, it's I gave it the name of a local repeater. I've got all this, but here in this choice, I've called it an analog because it's an analog channel. And so it's got high power, the bandwidth changed, all of that uh, changed. I've got a CTCSS code here. Whereas in the other one, I was looking at color codes for digital, but those are grayed out here because I selected analog over here. Now with channels filled in, we can go to zones and we can set up zones. And so my open spot zone, I'll double click there. And here are all the channels that I have programmed. And then I just use these little buttons to highlight and then transfer in or highlight and transfer out of each of the zones that I have established. And then I've named the zones as you can see there. There's one other thing I want to point out to you, and that is the optional features. And so here is a lot of the menu settings. And so the power on and off, alert tones, I didn't mess with that. Here you can have a bunch of colors that you can make for the various characters and backgrounds and so forth. We can go into GPS and set up our GPS information. The radio shows GPS, but it doesn't exchange GPS information with other radios, at least in the analog way that uh, you may have seen with my review of the UV32. It's, it shows the information, but it doesn't allow you to pick and then transmit and request data. The work mode is going to be in memory, and I want it to display channel. And we go on through all these other uh, things that you can look at here. This is what I want to show up in the menu, and basically I have them all uh, checked. If you didn't want to look at certain things, you can uncheck them and, and they wouldn't show up on the menu. So that's the optional feature. Key functions allows you to assign the values. And so on my sh uh, side key one, a short press is uh, changing power up and down. Long press is monitor. And then short key press on side key two moves me up one zone. Long press moves me down one zone. So I don't have to go into the menu and select the zone I want. A P1 short is my GPS information. P1 long is contacts if I'm in the digital mode. P2 short is the FM radio, turns it on. And P2 long uh, gives me a one key scan command. But you can see 
I've got a whole boatload of things that I can program into these keys. And those are going to be things that make sense to you the way that you use your radio. When I have all of this done, I would go here into file and I would save as, and then I would read this back to the radio. If you stumbled upon this video before seeing my part one review of the DM32 UV, join me over here for that in-depth video review. Again, please like the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. 73.